Hello again, I'm Terry Peterman, the Internet Electrician, and welcome to another one of our video shorts on current topics here at electrical-online.com. With the summer season upon us, we're going to discuss extension cords. Now, extension cords are an extension of our home's electrical system, and they're an essential item to have around the home, yard, or garage. We use them for everything from the connection of some temporary decorative lighting, like, say, patio lights or Christmas lights, to extending the power supply to facilitate the use of things like electric hedge trimmers, lawn mowers, and construction tools. When choosing the correct extension cord for the application, here's some things to consider. Make sure that the cord is of sufficient size to supply the tool or electric load that you'll be using. The more current you need, the heavier the cord needs to be. The longer the cord, the bigger as well. Always choose the correct cord for the application. All cords are rated for their conditions for use, like indoor or outdoor. Last but not least, inspect the cord to ensure that it's in good condition. In this video, I'm going to focus on the repairing of a cord should it need some attention. For various reasons, extension cords can become damaged. Maybe you accidentally rolled over the cord with the electric lawnmower, causing some major damage, or maybe you just drove over it with the car, causing only some slight damage, like a nick in the outer insulation. So if the cord is in good condition, other than this new damage, here's some of the options you have for repair. So here's the first scenario where you've maybe just drove over your extension cord and you've just got a nick in the outer insulation, if you can see that. You're quite certain that there's no internal damage to any of the conductors or their insulation. So it's okay to tape this one up because you just want to keep the moisture out of it, which can cause some corrosion and damage down the road. This is probably my least favorite repair because once it's all taped up, the next person that goes to use that cord is not sure underneath that tape what damage was done. But uh, if it's your cord and you know you've done a decent repair of taping it up, then you know it's safe to use that cord. So when you're taping up a outer jacket like this, you want to start with your electrical tape nice and close to the repair. Make sure that that outer jacket is pushed down. tape over the damage. You don't want any wrinkles. You want that tape nice and tight. Now what you want to do is go past the damaged area and then come back across the damaged area again and make sure you overlap each time you go back and forth you overlap your last wrap of tape. Again keeping it nice and tight. Back over where you finished last time and that's probably all you need you could go back over one more time now you've got three or four layers of tape over that nick break your tape and you should have a good decent repair on that nick and the outer cable so here's the next situation we're going to talk about you run over the cord with the lawnmower now your cord is damaged completely, the outer jacket is torn, the inner conductors are damaged and torn apart. So here's what you want to do in this case. If it's close to one end or the other, say it's close to the female end of the cord, just cut that entirely off, all the damaged area, and install a new cord cap, a female cord cap of the same rating, likely 125 volt 15 amp. If it's somewhere near the middle of the cord, or a salvageable end at least, then let's make two cords out of it. You can go buy yourself a male cord cap and a female connector body, and you can install a female on the one end and a male on the other, and now you have two cords of maybe different lengths or close to equal lengths, but at least you've salvaged as much of the cord as you can. So I'm going to show you how to install a cord end on this. We're going to use a female connector body, is what the technical term is, 15 amp, 125 volt. So we'll start by trimming off the outer jacket, and then we'll strip our conductors and get ready to install the female connector body. So I've laid this connector body out, and I use that to determine how much of this outer jacket I need to strip. You want to make sure the outer jacket of the cord extends through the cable clamp on the connector body, and then you just need enough wires to work with here to be able to strip them and terminate them onto the terminals here inside on the inside portion of the female connector body or cord cap. So make sure you put on your outer shell 
Make sure that extends through the clamp. And now we're ready to make our terminations. Okay, so I've made my terminations now. See, I've got the green wire on the green terminal screw, the white wire on the silver or neutral, and the black wire on the brass terminal. Now I'm ready to put this back into the housing. There's a slot you have to line up to get your face screws back on. And you tighten in your face screws. Every electrical device has a NEMA number, which is the National Electrical Equipment Manufacturers Association. This is a NEMA 5-15, that's 15 amp, 125 volt, regular household configuration. And there you have it, the new female connector body or cord cap. On the damaged end of your cord, you've cut out all the damage, and if you had two cords out of this, then you've put a female on the one end, and a male on the other, now you have two perfectly good extension cords. So there you have it. If you happen to damage an extension cord, it's good to know that you have some options other than just tossing the damaged cord into the trash. Thanks for watching. I'm Terry Peterman, the Internet Electrician.